she really taught me the importance of just being a good person in helping in service and giving back and seeing God in all things and all people. I would say my igniter and my activator, his connection to God and faith in God of any person that I've known to this day even. I was part of the Iranian revolution with my dad and you know being held as a political prisoner in Iran during the Iranian revolution. Everything that happened to him in his life, he never lost faith in God. And so he would he had the most faith of anyone that I knew, created depression, connection and led me to like most teenagers right to fell into drugs and alcohol to escape and just anxiety and everything that I was experiencing as a teenager and I would say that what saved me in essence and this I always like to say last night a DJ saved my life that's what it was my <laughs> first transcendental spiritual experience that's I beautiful the reconnection and you can even yes. now when you retell that story it was like oh, yeah. the catalyst for so much of your life today Shahira Barnes is a real light in LA. She's a sound healer to many corporates. She works as a life coach, as a speaker, and she shares with us how she's navigated her journey, the ups, the downs, the unexpected setbacks, and how each and every one of us can use sound and frequency to heal more and how we can shine our light even though life can sometimes be so difficult. Shashira Hapans. <laughs> So Shahira, welcome to Elevated Conversations. We were we were chatting a little just before we actually, you know, like let's say went live. And it, it's great to hear that, like us, you're a lover of nature and the ocean, and uh, let's say grounding into the earth to help us to reset in what can sometimes be a hectic environment. Perhaps you could describe for some of the people watching this how you see and you, you yourself experience like the energy of LA affecting yourself and others? Hmm. Um, beautiful question. Uh, and I think it's really uh, personal as far as like how every, how someone experiences Los Angeles. When I first moved to Los Angeles, everybody from, so from the Bay Area, this is about 20 years ago, everybody's like, oh my God, you can't go to LA. People are so superficial. Are you gonna be so ungrounded in LA? And that was totally not my experience. As soon as I walked into LA, I was welcomed with, with open hearts by so many people. And this was really the, the start of my sp real spiritual journey as well as full awakening. So um, it depends who you are, what you're coming to LA for, and your experience is going to shift as um uh, as such. So for me, it's been a really beautiful place to uh, ground as well as really be an activating place for uh, for me in many ways. Uh, there is different pockets of LA, of, of course, and I've been really fortunate to really be in, um, held in the cocoon of the best parts of LA and um, attracted and magnetized really wonderful people. But in LA, you have everything you have a little bit of city you have nature you have the beach you have the mountains and that's really rare for um, some places you know sometimes I think about moving to Florida and you don't have all that you have here and then the weather you can't beat it although you are here in June so um, <laughs> <laughs> you have the June gloom but you know the sunshine the weather everything is just optimal here we love it. We love being here. We love experiencing America's way. And we've learned, we've certainly learned a lot about the energy. And like you, we like Malibu down at Topanga. We, we really like to feel grounded. But I think that not being grounded is a just a, a, a mirror for maybe more inner work. You know, we're very Absolutely. much about, you know, seeing the synchronicities in, in our life. But Shahira, tell us about your awakening story. We love hearing about people's awakening stories. And yeah, I, I know everyone's awakening story is kind of like a birth story, really, isn't it? Yes, we absolutely. And um, mine, I would say, really goes back to my early, early childhood. I was a very imaginative child. I had many invisible friends. Um, I talked to myself for hours on end. And, um, you know, my parents weren't concerned. 
um, weirdly enough, but, um, you know, I could see what now I know to be spirit beings. Back then, I didn't know, but now I know that I was, you know, connected to the spirit realm. And I grew up with parents who were not necessarily very religious, as they had different faiths coming together. And so they raised us in just believing in God. And so we didn't have religion in our household. However, um, uh, my grandmother on my dad's side was extremely religious and she was a very, very devout Muslim and she would pray six times a day. And whenever I would go to see her, she would like, you know, grab me and take her under her wings and like show me how she would pray. And she would read the Quran to me. And uh, she would say that she comes from a long line of saints and that is transcendent to our whole family. And so if I do good, if I do bad, it happens to us as her you know lineage in essence instantaneously so she really taught me the um the importance of just being a good person in helping in service and giving back and seeing god in all things and all people and so she was i would say my igniter and my activator in in a sense uh, my dad was he was not religious but he was very spiritual i would have to say that he was probably one of the most um uh de devout in uh his connection to god and faith in god of any person that i've known to this day even no wow. matter what happened to his to, to him throughout his life and you know my um our history and our in our um in our background is, is too long to potentially share here but you know i was part of the iranian revolution with my dad and um you know, being held uh, as a uh, political prisoner in Iran uh, during um, the Iranian revolution. And so um, despite everything that happened to him in his life, he never lost faith in God. And so he would, he had the most faith of anyone that I knew. And so that also instilled um, a certain sense of um, just uh, devotion in me, devotion to spirit, to God, to um, all that is in essence. And so um, I would say when I went through the Iranian revolution, um, I went into fight, fight and flight mode in essence, and um, kind of lost my connection to spirit and our eventual move to the United States, trying to fit in. Um, I really pushed aside spirit um, and that disconnection to source to um, what was the life force in essence in me um, created a, uh, you know, uh, depression, uh, disconnection, and led me to, like most teenagers, right, to fell into drugs and alcohol to escape, and um, just uh, anxiety and everything that I was experiencing as a teenager. And I would say that what what saved me, in essence, and this this is I always I always love to say, last night a DJ saved my life. That's what it was. My first <laughs> transcendental spiritual experience was as a teenager at a rave. And that's where I had an, an my outer body experience through music. And I had this sense of vastness, expansion, connection, um, felt God, saw spirit once again. So. <laughs> that's beautiful. The reconnection. And you can even yes. feel it now when you retell that story, it was like oh, yeah. the catalyst for so much of your life today, correct? 100%. It just brought me back to those days of like prayerfulness with my grand grandmothers, being able to see spirit, being able to, you know, palpably feel it, right? Knowing that I wasn't alone, knowing that, um, you know, I, um, I was protected, I was loved, and there was something beyond what we were experiencing. And, um, you know, sound just transported me to beyond the beyond. And it showed me like a sense of my truth. It connected me back to source. It was like that lifeline that like, boom, like just re like replugged me back into source. And so, um, and this is an interesting, you know, share is that as a result of that awakening in essence through sound, I went on to become a DJ. Um, because I really wanted to be able to guide others on that same journey through sound, you know, that happiness, that joy, that, um, that, you know, uh, coming home once again, I wanted to share that with my friends. I wanted to be able to share it with the people around me that were lost and unhappy and doing drugs and alcohol to escape. And 
So um, I was a DJ for many years. And now I would say like many years later, um, uh, many professions in between, I now find myself doing exactly the same thing, but much more age appropriate with sound healing. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I bet you your playlists are amazing because you've got that little like DJ in you. We'll have to get some oh, off you. <laughs> that's, that's actually a really good idea. Like, your Sunday poolside mix. Yeah. You have a little spirit spiritual twist to it which I think 100 I, you, you've pegged me correctly yeah. there's still got like a bit of 3d flavor a little yeah. bit of you know <laughs> day club yes yes absolutely. <laughs> you know I, I teach kundalini yoga as well and so my playlists are always my students favorites because I really do incorporate um uh, the the musical side of kundalini yoga in a way that also creates that journey Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm forever connected to music. I'm forever grateful to sound, sound current, frequency, uh, the nod in essence to just plug me back in. So that was really, um, I would say, uh, the, the, the short or long story, <laughs> however you would oh, have it. It's, it's a good beginning. story. Yeah, it's good because, you know, one of the things we've come across with you know go having elevated conversations with people asking about their story is we find that um often people resonate with a different healing modality more than another you know like some people are into yoga and they're, they're at the yogi uh status where they you know they're doing handstands and putting their foot behind their ear and going oh now i've found oneness and that's where spirit connects you know and and I, I'm I'm just still at that basic level, but I I can enjoy yoga. It's like when I do a sound bath, when I go to a sound healing, I experience it. It's absolutely beautiful. I can do breath work, and I connect through that. You know, so I've got to experience a lot of these different modalities. And what I love is when I can connect with someone who's got the passion about the one that for them is like their gift. You know, because we're born with gifts and abilities and often they come through. And I think for people, it's so special if they can find that calling, that, those gifts and abilities. And it certainly seems like you've done that with sound, right? Yes. And, you know, it's one of the modalities that um, has been part of my awakening process, for sure. Um, I would say probably the strongest. Yes, absolutely. Um, my biggest igniter. But um, on the path, you know, as you um, ex begin to explore and remember, uh, you uh, you unearth other gifts that you have as well, right? So I've been really fortunate to be able to um, create a wellness uh, brand that encompasses not only sound healing, but also energy healing, transformational coaching. I lead ongoing um uh, international uh, retreats, transformational international retreats, all about connecting to different vortexes around the world and just, you know, being able to awaken through um, these uh, uh, major activation points on earth, um, as well as, uh, you know, just holding uh, beautiful uh, ceremonies and circles for specifically women to help them really step into their full potential and awaken the uh, divine feminine force within, within. Which is so needed on the planet. There's lots of masks yes. getting around. That's the, that's the major catalyst right now. Yeah, that's totally. all women to come online with their yeah. gifts. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much for your service. It's so good that you're just expanding and helping so many souls. And we saw that you take retreats to Egypt and South America. Is that correct? Yes, well, I have one planned for uh, Peru in August. Yes, this is going to be a shamanic journey through uh, the ancient lands of Peru, um, uh, all the major activation points and uh, um, working with a, a really renowned uh, shaman family, the Queros Pacos um, in uh, Peru, where it's it's not about uh, plant medicine, it's really about um, uh, their uh, spiritual practices in awakening and uh, um, uh, performing soul soul retrievals and purifications and connections to uh, the star systems in essence. Um, so just their incredibly devout, incredibly devotional, inc incredibly um, just um, pure in their teachings and in their transmissions. And they say that when you work with them, that you um, they they initiate you into their ancestry into their lineage. Mm -hmm. So. 
We're really looking forward to this beautiful um, uh, gold mind retreat coming up in August and the, for the 888 portal. Uh, so I'm going to be teaching a little bit about uh, um, uh, abundance um, mindset in essence, really being able to clear any uh, limitations that we're holding in our subconscious mind uh, about that. And then um, really using the land and the uh, the shamanic activations to do the rest. And uh, we'll be in Machu Picchu for the 888 portal. So That's beautiful. I mean, yes, if I could dream up my life, this would be it. And I'm living it. And uh, for um, the 1111 portal, we are going to Egypt um, once again. Um, and uh, will be in the pyramids for 1111. And 1111, as you may know, is really the code of awakening. Uh, one of the first codes of awakening that most people see when they start seeing 1111. But, you know, for me, it's also, you know, two, you know, two beautiful channels directly to the heart of source. And being able to be in the pyramids uh, during that uh, portal is uh, so powerful because the pyramids were ascension chambers in essence to begin with, right? They were, um, you know, create it to provide a uh, connection directly to the heart of God, to have that God consciousness. And so um, that will be a an 11 day journey through uh, the ancient uh, sites of Egypt uh, and, and Kemetic teachings and ancient mystery teachings and activations through the temples and the gods and goddesses. That's so. beautiful. We've done Egypt. We went with Robert Edward Grant um, last oh, year. With that. Beautiful. And it was so activating. It was like we stepped into a time portal and it's almost like we got home and we were like, were we, were we even just in Egypt? Like <laughs> it was very um, activating. We remember um, some things in the Dendera uh, temple. Amazing. Yeah, made, made it downloads, one. but still trying to work <laughs> and pack it out, pack it, you know, out. I don't know if you ever do or is it just an ongoing unraveling? It's an ongoing unraveling and, you know, what you feel in that land um, shifts you, transforms you. Uh, it brings out your shadows. It brings out your light. It brings it all out for you to come home and work through. It is the beginning of a, a new spiritual awakening for, for most and so much to unpack. And I talked to people that we took two years ago and they're still in the midst of unraveling. And it feels like a dream when you're there and it goes by so fast. And it's so much that comes at you at once um, that it it is hard to integrate. I This time I did create an integration to see why um for a few days to be able to really you know uh sit with all the major ignitions and activations that we'll be mm. experiencing because it can be so much like it temple, really temple and all flows much. yeah how it does is. how does egypt or how does peru compare to egypt um well there are different energies um i would say you know um for me like peru feels more uh like like I'm being held in the womb uh, of Pachamama. Or oh, fertile. Right? It's, 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 yeah, it's 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 more it's it's more of a being held um and grounding, whereas Egypt to me feels more cosmic, more galactic. It feels even it, it just feels like you're you know transcending um through time and space and you know going into you know uh, um a, a whole other timeline. Um so uh, it's it, it is more cosmic to me in a sense. So I would I would say that's a differentiation for me personally. But they run on the same uh, energetic grid. So the you know Machu Picchu is connected to the pyramids. So it's the same energetic grid that connects the two. So you're feeling the same activation. So the idea is to be able to go to these energetic spots around the world and to be able to harness these energies. And it helps you when you when you visit these sacred sites. It helps you remember. Um, you know, the fragmented parts of you, it helps bring them back home little by little, mm. you begin to, you know, um, fully remember who you are. And um, uh, yeah, so that's the gift. Oh, <laughs> so, so Shahira, have you been to any other um, gateways or uh, chakra energy centers other than those two? Because I'm, I'm uh. we're, we're fascinated with this, because we know that there's real activations that happen on these points of the planet. Absolutely. So yes, um, well, Glastonbury, you know, the heart, the heart, <laughs> the heart chakra. <laughs> You've been there, you visited. Yes. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, um, 
there are places that you also don't necessarily um, know about uh, on a larger scale. Like we went to a beautiful place in um, uh, in Greece. Um, it's um, oh my goodness, uh, it's a feminine, it's, it's a feminine, um, it's a feminine island of Greece, and that's kind of the, the, where the birth of the goddess is supposed to come from. It will come to me. Um, where else have I been personally? Well, you may or may not know this, but um, in the Middle East, the reason why there are so many uh, wars in the Middle East, it's not even so much about oil or money. It's really about stargates. You know, Iraq is a stargate. Yeah. So that's why we had the uh, the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. You know, the places, Egypt is a stargate. The, these places are major star stargates where um you know um powers that be however you want to say it don't necessarily want humanity to go and experience or if there is a um an activation in these spots they you know they come to dampen it you know what you're seeing in israel right now happening and all of that you know it's uh it's it's a it's a way to dampen the the hu humanity spiritual ascension we're past that there's no, there's no stopping the spiritual ascension that is happening right now, right? Um, we have transcended the grids, you know, they've built like this corrupt grid over these stargates um, and humanity's consciousness has actually transcended that. So we're seeing beyond it all. But if you look at different stargates around the world, that's where you see major chaos happening. And it's not because of the resources as most people think, it's because of spiritual energy that is present there that is that humanity uses to awaken itself. Mm. So that's that's interesting, right? <laughs> yeah. Kauai, for example, Kauai is another major um major place of uh activation. You know, it's a uh, part of the old um uh Mew, Mew, so Lemuria uh is you know partly situated in Kauai. Um, uh, South uh, South America and Brazil, for example, there is many activation points. Um, where else like, have like I personally? Titicaca, right? Like Titicaca in uh... Lake Titicaca is a place that I'm going to after my uh, Peru uh, retreat. For me personally, to really tap into the spiritual energy of the waters, and that's supposed to be where. The, you know the sun and the stars were born right so yeah, that's the one that i know there's an island that apparently has what was called the temple of the sun on it yes. was the particular yes. part of lake titicaca i i haven't no, been to the one in australia Uluru, but roxy has been have. there and there was tears and breakthroughs and it was beautiful wow. <laughs> yeah. very beautiful community down there yeah we got to spend some time in some birthing cage with the indigenous and they mm -hmm. taught us about you know there's all imprints on the hieroglyphs on the walls about the paintings about the history and the white man coming in and it was very very shifting um but the energy out there is just beautiful it's so clean it's because you know, it's in the middle yeah. of the desert it's like no one's there you know so it's just it's powerful Yes, and I'm sure yeah. that there probably is a connection between that sun gate and the sun gate in, um, in Lake Titicaca as well. And that's on the border of Bolivia, the one in Lake Titicaca. And so it's, it's another, you know, powerful portac, a vortex for us to be able to tune into, to be able to transcend this, you know, human existence, understanding that we're not just this vessel, right? Every time that you go to these portals, um, you just, just being on the land transforms you. Uh, some people, you know, have taken some people on these pilgrimages and they're like, you know, I, I didn't really feel anything or like, you know, not uh, not in the moment, but afterwards, I didn't really feel anything in that space. And it's it's not so much about feeling anything. It's about understanding that being in that space has transformed you. You are a different person, whether you feel it or not, that activation is is there and it's may may or may not be palpable depending on how sensitive you are. Right. But yeah. you are now a changed person. So just as a result of stepping foot in that space. Yeah, um, and, and um, who you are in that moment too. It's like I went to Egypt in my 20s yeah. and it was beautiful and amazing and it was all about the architecture and big stones. <laughs> and yeah, 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 you know, great. But yeah. then when I had my awakening and I go back in my late 40s, 
all of a sudden it's spiritual. All of a sudden I'm having these profound dreams. I'm, I've got tears walking through different temples. I don't know what this is that I'm feeling like sadness and slavery energy here. And they went here to get cleansed. And oh my gosh, it's got a beautiful energy. Oh, completely different because um, you see things relative to where you are at that time. And I'm sure my vibration had gone up. So I was getting different things, yes. right? Yes, 100%. It's so true. It really is about who you are, where you're at in your spiritual journey and what you feel. But no matter what, I'd like to also just point out that even if you don't you can look at, you know, those temples and be like, it's just a rune. You know, what do you see? or What do you feel? And then others like you and I, when we go in, we can like just feel the wall with like, you know, a foot between our hand and the wall and feel the the frequency of the wall and the hieroglyphs just coming, mm-hmm. coming to life. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that is who you are in this at this point in your journey. However, even for those people in their 20s that may not feel anything right now, that's the 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 beginning of the ignition and the activation that is hopefully going to lead to their full spiritual awakening at some point. And do we ever really fully spiritually, you know, uh, awaken to, you know, our, our fullest potential in this lifetime? Potentially, but it is a journey, right? Every day you're taking steps towards it. Mm-hmm. And I always like to say, you know, um, this is a pursuit of enlightenment, for sure, for most of us on the spiritual path. But the day that you are fully enlightened is a day that you're actually supposed to just go back home to light, right? Um, most people that become enlightened don't stick around on planet Earth anymore. <laughs> you just go back home. So really enjoy the journey. Enjoy the process. Then understand that it's an unfolding. Every day there is a blooming. and Every day there is a new awakening and a new um connection uh to and and a new step stone towards that journey so just really enjoying the journey Mm. yeah and i think once you know you're on the journey then you've made that step Uh, i'm not i'm sure you must be familiar with the law of one you know talks about choosing yeah and once you choose to move from service to self into service to others particularly at an energetic level. It doesn't mean everyone needs to, you know, quit their job and become coaches or a Reiki healers. Right? <laughs> like there are, but, but we can, once we understand that we're a soul having a human experience and that this life matters and there's more to life than just your car and your title on the door and where you go for holidays. Like once you like really realize that like this life's important, I can overcome my obstacles, my, my sadness, my depression, things that have happened in my past that are a part of my story are probably here so that if I can overcome them, you know, I can really expand and grow. I think once you know you're on that journey and you're like, you know, it's so corny, but you break out of the matrix or that illusion that I'm just a little old me and an individual, a separate self, that's the power that people can start to know they're moving along wherever they are on that. I think that little bit of the awakening that for me is like the sizzle bit because that's important. I love everything that you just said because one of my favorite questions that I wake up with every day is how may I serve? Mm. And I think it's perhaps one of the most important questions that we can ask ourselves daily to align with our divine purpose and true abundance. You know, most of us um, are seeking to receive in some way right we're like praying to receive but often we forgive we forget that the the greatest law of attraction is to give to be of service there's nothing higher than that and so you know for those of us that are seeking a way out of the matrix as you just said you know finding more fulfillment in our careers and being able to you know step into our spiritual paths um most are afraid of not being able to make enough money or not, you know, be able to make ends meet doing the sole work that they they want to do. And so most, most people don't end up following, uh, following their calling, right? But our divine path and abundance truly opens up when we step out of what is it, what, what is it, what is in it for me into how can I be able to um, make uh, make someone else 
happy, serve someone else and tuning into our gifts. Like what, what we're good at is generally what we would do for free. What we would, you know, um, you know, where if you wake up and, you know, say, okay, what, what could I do that I would be happy where I would do it for free? That's generally your gift, right? And, and taking the focus off of scarcity and limitations and really focusing and shifting, transforming other people's lives is where you're going to see the most amount of um, support, universal support coming to you and helping you on that path. And the law of the universe has always been in favor of those in service. If we are in demand mode, the universe will demand more of us to be successful, right? However, if we're um, in service mode, then the universe in turn begins to serve us. And that's been the principle that I teach, the principle that I live by. And, um, you know, I just really feel that true abundance and happiness flows to us when we're in our, when we are serving our divine mission on this earth and helping humanity in some way. And that is really what was, in, you know, like, ingrained in me through my grandmother you know this is one of her teachings is that you know I, re I would remember we would walk um you know the streets of iran as a child and you know she would pull money from her socks and give to like a homeless person and you know she would like you know take bread and like give it to someone that was hungry and that is like that that kind of like selflessness and that kind of like love for others and humanity i think is what is is what is going to make the world go around. And if we just, you know, looked up outside of our own, you know, limited existence and looked at others is, and, and began to serve is when your life is going to shift. Mm, love it. That's so yeah. right. That's some wise words there. How can I serve today is a really beautiful yeah. way to wake up for all of our listeners even because a lot of people come to us and what are my gifts? What are my abilities? What am I meant to be here? And we're so programmed to think that we're not worthy of, you know, being a leader or not worthy of being, you know, uh, uh, someone that is an influence. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I love it. I was going to ask you, Shah Shahira, some of your profound moments on this journey? What are some outstanding stories that you can tell us from experiences? We know this this journey is so magical. And we, you know, I didn't, I I didn't really like magic growing up. When I met Pete, I didn't like the magic show on TV. I'm like, turn it off. I don't know how he's doing it. And I don't, you know, it frustrated me. But now I've surrendered to yeah. allowing the universe unravel in front of me. And it's just like a birthday every day. Seriously, like seeing the synchronicities and how could have that happened? Like you you can't make this stuff up is often a word that me and my friends in this community are often saying to each other. So if you have anything profound to share, we'd love to hear it. I have so many. Where do I even begin? Um, you know, it's, I would say in the past couple of years, it's really um, amplified whatever's happening in my life as far as synchronicities and just like, you know, signs and synchronicities from the universe, just really showing me that I'm on the right path or the right vibrational alignment with what I'm seeking because um, like I've just I've literally me and my husband began to keep a list because we keep looking at each other being like how is this even possible we just said this and now all of a sudden you know like someone that we haven't seen in like three years appears in front of us and you know you know we're connected in this way and it's just you know the universe bringing you I would say probably one of the um, most recent ones was um, I was doing sound healings for a uh, um, for a, a corporate establishment. And um, when the pandemic happened, they stopped obviously using us and you know, because they weren't doing any in-persons. And I was thinking about him and, you know, the, the space. And I was like, oh, we haven't really done anything for them. It had been like, obviously a few years past the pandemic. And I was like, I haven't done anything with them in so long. I wonder how they're doing. I wonder if they're still doing sound healing. So they were literally doing it like on a weekly basis. And, um, and I was like, it's been quite a while. I wonder if they're back at it again. And all of a sudden, like, as I'm thinking about him, and this is just probably the craziest experience that I've had, as I'm thinking about him, this has been like two and a half years past the pandemic, and um, I come to a a, a, a a stoplight, and all of a sudden, I see him across 
like at the stoplight about to take, you know, steps in front of my car. And I was like, Carl, you know, I just like, you know, kind of like <laughs> did a little honk. I was like, Carl. And he stopped like dead face looking at me. And he's like, look at your phone. And he keeps walking. And he had sent me a text <laughs> in that moment that I hadn't even seen. Yeah. I would love to have you guys back on. We are back. Mm. We, are, we are offering sound healings again. How does that happen? Yeah. And so this is my life daily. I mean, this is yes. like a very small example. I think it and it occurs. And that also just, you know, is that such a um, powerful, uh, um, you know, uh, example of how our thoughts create, right? So you can think positive thoughts and it will create. And if you think negative thoughts, they'll also create. So just keeping your mind um, focused on the things that you want to um, manifest in a positive way, as opposed to, you know, worry or fear or anything else. One of my teachers always used to say to me, worry is a prayer. So that makes so much sense, right? If you're thinking about something, worrying about something, you're actually manifesting it because you are in that vibration of magic and alchemy and creation, right? So you are calling it all in. The universe doesn't know between the good and the bad. It's just thinking that you want to have that experience. So stop worrying and start creating magic in your life. Stop really tuning in and aligning with the vibration of that, which is what you are seeking, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, um, my girlfriend and my, my girlfriend and I constantly laugh. We're like, this is just a life. There's just no point even sending this stuff to each other anymore. <laughs> This is how we live now. <laughs> we love it. We love it. We've got so many um, mirrors here. Me and Pete, you know, similar stuff is happening into our life. And that's why we love to talk about it because it's so magical. That's the reward. And that's the little ga game as a child, why we're meant to like dance through these beautiful experiences and that high frequency of the magic. And um, I think moving into this higher frequency, we're going to just have more and more and we're all going to be looking at each other like, whoa, and it's going to be better than we ever even thought, you know? I agree with you. I 100% agree with you. Yeah. Um, and it is empowering too, right? To understand that you are in control of your destiny. Mm. Like before, I feel like I was kind of, in the throes of like, okay, well, you know, if I do good, then good will happen. Or if I, uh, and that's still the case, but you know, there was a sense of like, you have to do something in order to achieve something. But now it's like, no, you are a co-creator. You simply have to think it and it comes to you. There's nothing that you can't have. There's nothing that you can't do. Mm -hmm. And you just have to constantly work at keeping yourself at the vibrational match of that, which you seek. Right. Thank and you. so how do you do that? Well, you know, first of all, you keep your thoughts positive and our thoughts are um, hard to keep positive at all times. You know, as human beings, we have 80,000 thoughts a day and 80% of those are negative thoughts. And so being able to have a spiritual practice that keeps your mind aligned to the sacred and to the positive is what I practice. And I think that is really the key to why these things are happening for me in a positive way, right? Because if I am now really in tune with manifesting or creating or magic, I can create anything. I can create nightmares or I can create heaven on earth, right? And so being able to keep my mind on the sacred with, for example, Kundalini yoga, um, which, you know, really helps to unleash your full potential as a human being and connects you to, to source connects you to, you know, kind of plugs you back in. Um, but, you know, in Kundalini yoga, we have a lot of mantras that we chant. I also practice a lot of Buddhist chants, right. Um, you know, Hindu chants um, mm -hmm. that uh, keep my mind on the japa, right. Keep my mind on the sacred. So if I'm practicing a mantra for a half an hour, or an hour a day, keeping my mind on the sacred and <laughs> mentally vibrating a frequency, a high frequency, but what is that going to do to my energetic force, mm. to my ability to be able to manifest the positive, the sacred, the, you know, the ethereal. Mm. And so um, that's one way, of course, sound, sound healing, using these beautiful crystal bowls, gong, uh, did the jury do, which my husband plays a jury do, by the way, <laughs> which, you know, he's been dying to come to Australia. Um, he was going to come right before the pandemic happened. And then we guess shut down for two years and that didn't happen, but he was going to study with, uh, one of, um, the very, uh, you know, um, 
just uh, renowned um, elders. Um, and I forget his name, but uh, he was so looking forward to coming and it didn't happen. So in, 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 in due time, but I think he's in passed. Yeah. You'll have to let us know. And yes, yes. Um, but yeah, all of these instruments, all of these tools that we have available to us, our breath, um, you know, the meditative practice that we do, all of those have a way of being able to cleansing and clearing the mind back into the truth and the essence of who we are, connecting us back to source, understanding that we are all one with the creator. We are part of the creator, therefore the creator, right? And so when you're in that space, First of all, you feel empowered, right? You feel like there's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that you can have. But in that space also, I feel that you have a download of the compassion of God in your heart, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have the ability to be able to see the God in others. And, and that's really my hope and my wish for all of humanity is to have these practices available to them, to be able to transform themselves, to be able to really um, create peace within, to be able to see um who they truly are and who others are because we're all one there's no separateness there's no division there's no that, that you know the illusion of separateness is just an illusion is what it is and so when we live in that state and that harmony back in back in tune with our original um you know kind of uh um the, our original dna codes that were created right like lemurians for example one of the first you know star seats here on on planet earth their DNA was that of unity consciousness, mm -hmm. was that of Mother Earth, was that of harmony with all things, right? And so um, most of us are being called back to that, uh, uh, that sense of oneness. And that's really what I teach as well. Everything that I do, every retreat that I hold, every class that I teach, every you know healing that I do is that connection back to source, that connection back to their own uh, healing potential, their own guru within the God within and just awakening that God force within each of us. Yeah. And I think, you know, for so many people watching this who, you know, if you're not in this world, it can be, and by that, I mean the world of this sort of these words, the jargon, what all that means. It's like, sounds exciting and people are like, wow. Yeah. But like, what do I do? And, you know, it's as simple as remembering and I love this saying, but it's what you are speak so loudly, people can't hear what you're saying, right? So it, for the average person, we can go through our world and have a generosity of spirit mm -hmm. and being of, be of service by giving a compliment, saying a genuine thank you for someone who's packing your groceries. Mm -hmm. When you're driving down the road and you see, you know, the beautiful spring leaves on the trees and, you know, the place is alive and the flowers are like appreciating that. So being in a state of gratitude, looking for the positive out there in the world, but not just thinking it, turning the thought into action by just giving the compliment, the smile, the genuine thank you to someone who is being of service uh, or a compliment to someone at work or being there and actually genuinely listening if someone seems a bit down. Like that's how we can be of service but still go to the office. You know, that's how we can still be of service while we're doing whatever it is we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And at home, if you've lived through that, it's a lot easier when you're in that space of gratitude and giving and service, which is really what the inner child and the authentic self is coming through. If we're over our trauma and our worries of what people will think, we'll just, we'll, it's easy to be like that. And we're out of the out. trenches. We're out of the trenches. <laughs> But that spirit living through us, and that's how like someone day to day is going, wow, I'm excited about all this, but I only ever get to feel spiritual once a month when I go to, you know, whatever it is, my this thing, my that thing, my retreat. But the inspiring thing is, I think the generosity of spirit idea and the gratitude, it's something everyone can do daily. And even when someone's in the beginning, they might have to fake it till they make it. You know, they might have to sort of get themselves to learn to give a compliment or receive it. You know, like someone said, oh, wow, I love that color on you. Oh, I just, I don't know. And it's never usually my color. It's like, oh, risk, allow yourself to just receive that compliment if it came. Catch yourself oh, there, you know, oh. give the gratitude. Pete, you don't even know the profoundness of what you just shared. Um, it also goes back to one of my first teachings that I received from my mentor um, many, many years ago, 
I was going through a divorce and I wanted to find love again. And um, he said, first and foremost, you have to be love. In, in order for you to attract love, you have to be love. And I want you to just plant seeds of love everywhere that you go. And that was like my first spiritual, like, I feel like awakening to what it meant to be love and to receive love. And so I made it my purpose. I made it my purpose that no matter, and this is, this was his instructions. When the uh, janitor comes to pick up your garbage, make him feel like a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Don't let him leave your office without a smile in his heart. Affect every person that comes into contact with you and make them feel like they are kings and queens. Mm -hmm. And that was probably the most profound spiritual lesson I've ever received in my life. And that in combination with my grandmother's teachings, I would say is the culmination of who I am as a person who have become as a person. And, you know, it is, it is a process of becoming right. Um, and uh, remembering, and it feels good to be in that state of making other people feel good. And that love just grows in your heart. And that, that, love in your heart is what begins the process of awakening and then it will lead to many other things mm -hmm. but that's just the beginning and you said it so profoundly and so beautifully and that is exactly it there's nothing more simple to start than just to be love and just to be kind and make other people feel good about themselves and don't you don't have to be disingenuous there's something beautiful about everyone and if you can find that and if you can share that making their day, putting a smile on their heart and in their face, like that's God's work. Uh, I totally agree. And I love the way you, you word that, you know, that is, that, that's God's work. Um, and wow, like we, we go deep, we tie this in for people into their day to day. And, you know, this is what the sort of elevated conversations that Roxy and I are trying to really you know, spread out there to the world to to help elevate consciousness are all about. So we just appreciate you so much. Um, it was my honor. This was so fun. I love you both so much. Thank you for being such beautiful lights, sharing this, you know, uh, journey of consciousness evolution and just, you know, love and service and gratitude and all that you do. Um, thank you for being such bright lights. And it was an honor to be a part of this today. Thank you. Thank so, you. And, and I hope to connect more for sure. Yeah. Yes, definitely. We're, we're going to put your information, your links, it's particularly about the Peru, because I know you've got that one coming up and there might be a Both lot of- Both of them are sold oh. out right now. Oh, oh wow. Okay. For, for the future that. ones, absolutely. They can you know, stay in contact with me. And I do have a couple containers. I have my Quantum Ascension uh, mentorship container, which is a three or six month container that they can work with me one-on-one, -on -one, which I incorporate basically in my whole medicine wheel, as well as a female um, container that I have uh, uh, coming up, Awakening the Goddess Within. So, all, you know, I, I'm happy to be of service any way that I can. And uh, future retreats are all coming for 2025. I love it. Thank you. Thank yes. you so much. My honor, my 